Opa! <laughs> Welcome everybody to Stavi's World 904-800 Stav on this. I think this is Christmas Day, Eldis, isn't it? Christmas Day. We ju- me and Mateo just woke up from our bunk beds. <laughs> we unwrapped the presents <laughs> under the tree. Eldis Eld brought us some hot cocoa. I finally got the Barbie I always wanted. <laughs> he finally got his Barbie dream house. <laughs> so. I got a pocket. Uh, I don't want to say what it was this early in the episode. For I got fear a of demon- pocket, You got a Mighty Max. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Oh, man. Uh, so we're, we're just having a great time. Eldis cooked up a breakfast. It'd be great if we all lived in a, all our friends in bunk beds One higher bed. and higher. <laughs> I was going to say one building, but just a really tall no. room with one a bunch with of bunk you beds. With 14 bunk beds. And I'm stacked. still at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Uh, spiritually, Eldest is more of the bottom here, if not sexually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, what a wonderful Christmas time. Do you remember, um, Do you, what is your favorite like childhood Christmas toy you ever got? You, was there one that really sticks out? You too. So okay. once I got a Maleficent, so they didn't make Maleficent action figures. Mm-hmm. I'm still obsessed with Maleficent, not the Angelina Jolie version. Uh-oh, you uh, didn't like that one, huh? Uh, obvi- under no circumstances, <laughs> no. As a straight man, I was like, his, the lens I look at almost everything Angelina Jolie is involved in, I was like... Would it be cool to fuck a lady dressed like that? And it would be. It would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even I'd get on board. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I could use the horn. But she, you know what's funny? When I saw that movie, um, I left early because it was so bad. But when I saw that movie, I was sitting next to this girl. And at one point, Angelina Jolie's character, Maleficent, says, I don't much care for children. And the girl next to me goes, that's not what we heard. And I was like, we have to go to brunch. (laughs) Um, So they didn't have any kind of action. But they did have a glass figurine Mm. of Maleficent. So I got that in the first grade. In first grade? First grade. Wow. And then. Who gave you that out of curiosity? My Aunt Cindy. Cindy, who knew what was up. Yeah, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> there's no way you get a first grade boy a Maleficent figurine if you don't know, if you can't read the tea leaves. <laughs> Your dad's like, "What the hell is this? this is weird? Why? Why would she give him this? Maybe Cindy's really phoning it in. She must have bought it for a different girl and." Uh, just ran out of time to I get him. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> I mean, come on. You never thought of that? I did it. First grade, she got you a crystalline, uh, a bitchy woman. <laughs> she didn't even give you, like, a, a hot one that conceivably could be like, well, you know, little boys want to kiss Snow White. It's the bitchy, like... The most RuPaul's Drag Race character in the Disney universe. She got you that when you're seven years old. <laughs> you never put that together. <laughs> An aging bitter queen. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> Not even an action figure. <laughs> it's a collectible crystal. <laughs> Damn, that's awesome. Shout out, to, shout out to Cindy. <laughs> Didn't we? Do Cindy the one? Is Cindy the one in the sketch that I was in? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know Cindy. Yeah. If you watch this old um, me and IFC. Yeah, IFC. We did this. Uh, I did this show called Janice and Jeffrey with Molly Merkel and Star Wars is in one. But Aunt Cindy's in like five of the yeah, episodes. Yeah. So you just see this Mexican lady in the background. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Aunt Cindy. Yes. I did not think of it of that course. way. Cindy knew what was going on, man. Cindy did know <laughs> yeah. what was going on. She still knows what's going yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. No, I, it was that, and then... <laughs> okay, this is another one. <laughs> In third grade, I got a storm action figure. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yes! <laughs> Truly batting a thousand for gay, the most gay character a little gay boy would be into. Well, because every time Storm, you know, like when she she would summon her powers, of course, it couldn't be everyone. No one else spoke. They were just like Cyclops yeah. just shot. Yep. Jean Grey just used to you know gambit. But Storm, they're like, hey Storm, could you open the door? I summon the winds <laughs> yeah. of the Arctic cold. You Absolutely. Know, it was, so it just. And also, again, she was the one because I was a big X Men head as well. Same. That that cartoon was awesome. I mean the the guitar riff, the that the <laughs> opening theme song <laughs> is the most. I mean that was the sickest. They really. It's crazy that in hindsight, what has become so popular, like the fact that it's like Marvel, which was never cool when we were kids. And the Captain America, all that shit was. Although corny. it is on its way out. It is, but you know cool. what I mean. But I know, I know but exactly it had a decade run of ruling culture. Whether we want to, whether we like it or not, 
it was the the biggest part of culture, which is insane. Because when we were kids, X Men without it crushed that. And in fact, I think that was maybe the problem because it was the first ones of those movies before they had really figured it out. It, what people always say it was Spider Man, but no, it was X Men. It was X Men. Uh, I mean, the Spider Man was really good. I mean, because it book, wasn't. It wasn't. X Men made it. It took something that sounds so ridiculous yeah. and made it, at the time you look at it now, it's like well, watching like someone play Pong, you know, yes, like instead yes. of PS5. But they were on to something. Well, you know what it is about X-Men is that they should have, like what happened with the Marvel movies, which is everyone got their own movie and then there was a big team up. X-Men needed that mm -hmm. because all these characters were so fascinating. Mm -hmm. And then the team up movie would have been huge, but it was in an era where it's like, yeah, well, we're going to do the the Storm origin story. Like, get out of here. Right. All the X-Men, whatever. Anyway, whatever. But but Well, uh, Storm also, like, Halle Berry, as much as I love her, was not, not right, the right for Storm. Energy. It should have been Angela Bassett. Dude, okay. Ex what I was just going to say is that it's so funny to pick Storm. That the tr proves that you are a little gay kid. Not that we didn't needed to know that. I not have that we needed so proof. much. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> amount of evidence. Not that Storm we needed is like anymore. Six hundred and eighty-five. But, but but Storm, because I was, you know, I was a big X Men. Storm doesn't really do it for a little straight boy because she doesn't have that like. There's no flirtatious. Like, there's no, like, sexual, like, there's no bimbo energy that some of the, like, like rogue, rogue, was, rogue, I was mean, rogue, basically humping rogue everyone. was out of control. But even, like, even, like, Jean Grey, even though she was, like, uptight, it was like that, you still, it was like that uptight girl that you wanted. To, there was, but like, there was also the idea of, like, the ultimate, like, male fantasy of what femininity is, is that, like, she's weak and needs to be rescued. Like, right. she kept being, like, Scott, and she would fall, right, like, right, you know. Right. And so there was, the, it she was, was bisexual. She wasn't gay. Store, uh, no, no, uh, Jean Grey. Jean Grey. She, she, she feels like a bi girl to me. Although maybe that's Rogue. Now that I think about no, it. No, no, Rogue is straight. Just straight. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Jean Grey is. Um, and by the way, when I say that, I'm saying that's the no, man right. who wrote that character. I'm not saying that's yes. what it actually is. But Storm, you're right. Storm didn't Storm give off. Storm had none of that. She was like so about her business. Such a like. She was a boss. In like that's somebody you took orders from, which just did. Which I thought she was sick. I thought she was cool, but I didn't think of her the same way I would like the other characters. That I was like, ooh, she's hot. or even like. Well, she was underrated. She controls the goddamn weather. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they were yeah, like, yeah, they yeah. treated her like she was. I don't know, right. just like a like an extra or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Wolverine, it's enough. Mm, yes, very good point, Mateo. Just give me one second here. I wanted to remind our beautiful listeners at home that Fat Rascal is out right now on Netflix. If you haven't watched it. Christmas Day, around with the family, now's the perfect opportunity. And hey, if you didn't get a gift in time, these will ship pretty quick. The Stavi Baby 2024 official calendar. It's a beauty. You're going to love it. Wait a second. Your friend's a sports fan that you didn't get a present for? Maybe a Baltimore sports fan? Or maybe they just like front-facing caricature videos of regional idiots. Well, then here we go. We have... That's right, the Ronnie shirt. Okay, we've got a little merchandise, a lot of great options for you. So watch the special, buy a calendar, buy a t-shirt. Hey, Mateo, that goes for you too. I'm sorry, I interrupted you though. Yeah. Uh, controversial statement, I'm over it. It's <laughs> yeah, enough. Yeah, it's yeah. 100 <laughs> movies with him. Everything has to be about Wolverine and his dumb, stupid origin story. It's, because, it's so stupid. But do you know why though? It's because Hugh Jackman just was the best it's such a nice pairing of like he got everything out of that character. Whereas like, but even before him, like the yeah. comics, it's about Wolverine. Yeah, the movie, yeah, yeah. it's about Wolverine. The, right. the cartoon is about Wolverine, and yeah. it's like it's another Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's so. And he's supposed a, to be the oldest one, right? Everyone else is supposed to be like a kid, and he's like old as fuck in theory. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, going back to you, get your Storm action figure. Oh, that's yeah. right, <laughs> yeah. Storm. Uh, th that's about it. Those are the, okay. the, the biggest two memories and how that old come were to you? mind. What, when did you get Storm? Third grade. So Sounds how old are you in right. third grade? Sounds about right. I don't know. Uh, eight, 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 seven, like eight, seven or eight, seven or eight, nine, yeah. something like that. So like nice. Fourth grade is four, uh, nine and those crushed nine. it. Those were the those Christmas gifts were like it couldn't be better. They were the only were they the only even gay adjacent. Gifts you ever no, got? No, 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 no. My sister got a magic wand that I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> my cousin Megan had ruby red slippers that I wanted. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. you know what we did? My, my brother is very good with technology, even to this day. Mm -hmm. And when I found out there was no Santa Claus, because in first grade, 
we had this karaoke machine my aunt Nikki got us and my brother re- figured out that he could extend the wire mm. so he took the wire hit it and it went into the living room we had a tiny yeah. we lived in a really small house so it was just one hallway he had to put in so he had the microphone in the living room hidden and then the speaker came back into our room wow so you could- guys you guys bugged the living room <laughs> that's incredible dude wow so I was in first grade and I, I knew there was no Santa and you Claus. heard your like uh, your aunt and like parents being like who what are you getting Mateo and it's like you know that kind of that's hilarious yeah. yeah wow damn dude yeah I'm trying to think the best I had a lot of duds like I remember I remember asking for I think like it was like in Space Jam you know was the Space Jam had taken over the world and I really wanted an autographed Michael Jordan basketball okay why don't you just ask for the Holy Grail <laughs> well <laughs> This I, Greek family in Baltimore <laughs> is going to get their hands on a signed Michael well, Jordan. I'm from Chicago. I, I couldn't even fucking get it. I think it was hinted. I think I wanted some Michael Jordan stuff, right? I think that was just kind of my what I wanted. But it doesn't and, shock me that a straight person would be less particular in the things and verbalizing of what they wanted. Like, yeah, yeah. obviously the gay kid's like, here's my list. Yes, yes, yes. And there'll be a review. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You make sure it's the right stitching on the jacket. Um, this, my, for, for, for me, I just wanted some Michael Jordan shit. And I think my father hinted that he was going to get me an autographed ball. And I was like, what the fuck? That's fucking awesome. And then he brought me the ball and it was like a ball from Costco that like was really shitty that clearly might, it was just like printed in the same black that like Wilson or whatever. The, it was clearly not signed by Michael Jordan. I was just like, this was the big, and it's like, look, if that was one of the secondary gifts on a Christmas, that's fine. But that was like the big showstopper. And then, <laughs> and I got fucked so many times with my dad's techniques. Cause one time he was like, he had, we, it was two video games. It was uh, Donkey Kong. Mm. And it was, I want to say Luigi, the Earl, the first Luigi's Mansion. From GameCube? No, dude, this, there was a Nintendo, an, uh, there was a, maybe, an, was it N64? No, Luigi's Mansion, I'm such a faggot. It was a GameCube, <laughs> uh, which by the way, video games were big, uh, Look up Super Nintendo. Well. See if there was a Luigi's Mansion Super... There was some kind of Luigi game for Super Nintendo. I think. Was there some kind of Luigi Super Nintendo game? Hmm. Mario is missing. Anyway, it was a bullshit game, right? My dad picked two... It was like some kind of bullshit Luigi games. Where is it, Elvis? We got anything for the Nintendo? Super Nintendo? Mario is missing. Could it have literally been that? Am I the right? Well, Mario, Mario is missing. Huh. Anyway, whatever. I don't. Maybe it was this. No, no, it was this. Anyway, it was some bullshit like tertiary Mario game, right? Or it was like whatever Donkey Kong was out. And my dad was like, "Hey, which one of these do you think we should get for?" It was. It was my friend. I don't know why I even said this kid's name in particular, but I remember it was the big. It was the goose. He was like, he was like, which one should we get for? For our, for we're calling him the goose. I won't say his real name. Which one should we get for the goose? <laughs> Donkey Kong or this bull? You know, this Mario game. And I looked at. It, I was like, fuck the goose. He gets the bullshit game. That way, my dad will get me the good game. <laughs> and what he was doing, he didn't think that I was going to be a Machiavellian seven year old. He was basically asking me which one of these games is better. Which, and I was like, and I so wanted Donkey Kong. And then I just open it up on Christmas, and it's that game. And I'm like. What the fuck? <laughs> this was supposed to be for him, not me. Isn't that funny that we still remember this? I remember shit. that to this to this day. Those two ones where I just look at that. I'm like, the mic. This isn't signed. You told me it was gonna be signed. Like, first of all, what the fuck did I care about a signed ball? What if I'm you a had child? A Michael, what if you had a Michael Jordan signed Maleficent action figure? <laughs> that would have been that, awesome. I, video games were huge. I remember in first grade, my dad was really sick. He had a, a disease called vasculitis, and he was in the mm. hospital ICU for months. I mean, we, it was rough. We all yeah. said our goodbyes to him. Damn, the whole thing. Holy shit. So that my mom was so like destroyed. We had that Christmas at my cousin's house who lived next door, and it was all of us there. And so my aunt. Cindy Uncle Mike did all the gifts yeah. for us, but my yeah. uncle, my cousin Michael got um, Super Nintendo, 
And I mean, the most fun memories I have as a kid is sitting around my cousin's TV with all my cousins watching my cousin Michael play yeah, yeah, Super yeah, Metroid. Yeah, my, yeah, we yeah. watched Doom. Remember when Doom yeah. came out? We'd sit around the computer and it was so, it was scary. so scary. Oh, it was so scary. So scary. Play, yeah, going over, because we didn't have a, com my parents just didn't even know the concept. Of, actually, Eldest did have a computer. I will give him, I will give his even more immigrant than mine parents <laughs> credit. They had a computer very early on. But we, there was like a older family friend who's like, you know, he's probably like eight years older than me, whatever. Like now I, he just feels like my friend. But back then it was like, that was a huge, he's in high school when I'm fucking eight years old. And so he had a computer. He knew the, all that shit. And we would go over there and watch him play Doom. And I'd be like, ah, I would just be too scared to even do shit. He's the first person who, yeah, he's the first person who showed me like all these Nintendo games, all the like, yeah, Metroid um, Playing Pokemon was huge, like oh, Game Boy Color. Pokemon was big. We sound so old. Like I, I know, <laughs> back I know. in my day, I know. I will say that my my the best presents came from my dad. My dad was just a very spur of the moment guy, and he also like he he either most of, ninety percent of the time he had no money whatsoever, but he was a car, uh, uh, contractor. So when a big job was finished, he was flush with cash. And he's so bad with money that, but like when he finished a big job, I remember being pumped because he would take us to fucking Costco or the mall or whatever. And that's what, like all my best gifts from my father happened when he finished putting in like mahogany cabinets. Right. They were never my birthday or Christmas. It was always some random day in June where he's like, want to go to Costco? And then we came back with a Nintendo like bundle pack. And it was like, yeah, this is fucking, this day rules, dude. So I guess the Christmases were never, they never really knocked it out of the park on Christmas for whatever reason. I mean, Christmas I to me was more about my cousins. We go to my Nana's house and it's like, Everyone gets there at three and there's like 50 of us and we're yeah, just, yeah, there's like yeah. the kids downstairs screaming, the parents up. I mean, it's just a chaos. Yeah. Like complete, th those are my good memories. And yeah. I remember now thinking about it, like my mom and my, all my aunts and uncles would line all the kids up on the couch. So there's like 20 of us on the couch and she, they're all trying to take pictures of us and there's just everyone screaming at <laughs> yeah, each other, yeah, yeah, screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just thought it was normal. And then yeah. you exchange like stories on the playground and none of them match up yeah 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 i mean most of our shit was pretty it's pretty everyone in greek town had pretty much had the same trashy shit else what did you do for for christmas and shit you're know. albanian right i'm albanian yeah. yeah we just did normal like you know gather around the tree open presents my family it was always like it was always very much like you know me and my sister just kind of knew what we were getting and yeah. we would still wrap them up but we kind of yeah. like tell our parents or just like make them buy it at the store and then we'd yeah. wrap it up and like open it up around the christmas tree oh wow they had no concept of santa claus no we just really wow albanian you godless communists i know <laughs> yeah. they're one country away from both of us and you're yeah. normal <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it was weird like my family yeah they really are the buffer zone between italy and greece <laughs> that's so funny yeah it goes fucking greece albania italy <laughs> we've got the whole fucking we've got a whole chunk of the balkan here yeah for real but <laughs> my family like my family like yeah we just we never did like surprise gifts, mm. so I always feel like a lot of pressure when I have to like shop for shit oh, for dude, my wife. That makes or, like, so much people sense. People outside of my family, because like this fucking guy, when it's his wife's birthday, we'll talk about it for three months before. He'll be like, <laughs> "What the fuck?" And he always get her bull. He'll always be like, "Uh, a gift card and a shirt." He'll always blow it, <laughs> or he'll go way too hard. It's like a uh, laptop. <laughs> you know, it's either like yeah. they'll drop the nuclear bomb or he'll you've done it. You've had a couple good ones. So you got you got to pay the premium when you wait last minute. Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. It's like when you're down on time. Like, yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. getting stuff from Amazon or something. It's got to be something fucking. Yeah, I'm not I'm at, the, I'm at the point in my life. Where I'm not good at accepting gifts or giving. I don't know. Mm. I, I'm more of a like, let's have dinner with each other i'll sure, pay sure, for sure, dinner sure, and then sure. we can connect with each other yeah, yeah, but like yeah. the buying a gift like i never think like oh we have to get people but like lisa traeger is good at that mm -hmm. she always thinks of like i got gifts i thought about getting gifts i have this and i thought of my and i thought i never think of it i don't know what it, that it's a, like a block with me but like for me like it, my husband's his birthday is going to be in the beginning of january i'm like 
I'm planning on like a nice dinner because mm. I don't know what to get. Well, anal, but I mean, I don't yeah. know what else to like. Well, that's it for me. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Can't get the man the same gift every day, Mateo. <laughs> uh, we can. <laughs> it's called regifting. <laughs> hey, you got this for a bunch of other guys, didn't you? <laughs> You gave this gift to hundreds of other men before me. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> no, wait, did you guys listen to Chris? So Christmas music, to me, I've already started, by the yes. way. I don't give yeah. a shit about Thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving is always my dad's side of the family, mm. which I like, but they were... They're Italian? Dad's Mexican? No, my mom's Italian Mom's Mexican. Italian. My dad's oh, family right, right, right. is just... Just honkies. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. <laughs> just like, they're the nicest people, but yeah. they're complete strangers. I yeah, mean, and yeah, so yeah. the food was different. The, the, everything felt so stale, and yeah. I just was so uncomfortable. I like an ethnic holiday because typically in America, what you'll get is you will just have the whatever the real, the American meal is, but then you just also have a full other meal on top Lasagna. of it. We had the same thing where it was like, if for Thanksgiving, always a whole, like a lamb. Always a side of lamb, I and like Greeks. it was never because my we weren't big, we weren't poultry people. We nobody in my family really liked turkey, and so when we'd go, we had like our family friends would have Thanksgiving, they'd bring the turkey, and we would just bring an entire rack of lamb. And I still to this day, to this day, well, me and my brothers do, um, we do Thanksgiving, a, a Korean barbecue, but when we do Christmas, we're still not a big poultry family, and I will make. When we do it, I'll make a big steak roast. Okay, I'll I make like a rib that roast. Over chicken. Yeah. So well, Thanksgiving. What, did, did you listen sucks. to Christmas? Like to me, Christmas music. I love Christmas music. Yeah. I mean, Carpenter's Christmas album, Mariah Carey's Christmas album, mm -hmm. Kelly Clarkson's got a good one, very underrated. She's okay. got a great Christmas right. album, throwing All it right. out there. All right. But like, did you ever listen to Christmas music or like? I don't think so. Really, I don't know. We were never big Christmas like. I'm trying to think about this. Not really. I just feel like I don't know that there was that much Christmas cheer <laughs> in my family, to be honest with you. And also, Greek people have this weird thing where we really cared about Christmas, but actually, in Greece, New Year's was when you got your presents. Oh, interesting. So, the, and like Santa Claus came on New Year's. So, my parents tried. For the when we were little until we were like eight or something Your to do parents, these to do New Year's struggling to they, figure out they really tried to force New Year's on us and we were like you brought us to America you motherfuckers <laughs> give me my fucking presents <laughs> on Christmas enough with this bullshit uh, but they I just think my dad never really connected and my mom I think was just so overworked you know that it was just like I don't know I don't have like I don't honestly have the fondest Christmas memories mm. when it when what I think of as awesome is the first knock out of the park Christmas didn't come till pretty later, which is, I think I was in ninth grade, whatever, whatever year the GameCube came out. It would have been 2000, 2000. Was it? No. Yeah, 2000 or 2001. When did the game, look that up. Because it was when show. Mariah Carey's Charm Bracelet <laughs> album came out. So maybe even 2002. <laughs> GameCube release Let's date. Let's see how much my memory serves me. Oh, 2001. So, I was in right. Japan, 2001. So it probably came America, in North America. 2001 in November. Yeah. Was it 2000? Yeah. 2001? Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. Because the next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 2001, I was in sixth grade. Oh, so I was in sixth grade and my brothers were in fourth grade. Because we got a GameCube. And that, okay. All right. So I was younger than I thought. All right. That was the first just like Sick Christmas. Yeah. We get the GameCube. Me and my brothers are playing Madden. We're playing Star Fox. Like, I just remember that thing bonding my brothers and me together. It, they do. In though. a way that, like, we would take turns. We're all trying to help each other. Then we get FIFA. We play each other. It was like, to me, Christmas is just like, wake up early as fuck, get your presents. You kind of have to, like, there's no, Thanksgiving was always the, like, you have to do shit holiday and Christmas yeah. was like you gave me my presents thank you for all this food I will eat it very fast and not around you and then I will go upstairs with my brothers and we will play GameCube until 4 a.m. But that and it people, was just the best. It was the give, fucking best. They don't give video games enough credits that it's people do look at even today as like sort of a waste of time. 
But it, it like it is a way that men can bond with each other in a way yeah. that you can't in other ways. I mean, it's like I play a lot of Fortnite and it's I'm playing with all these straight people. And then my friend Nick, who's by the way, at my Carnegie Hall show, he goes, how do you like my outfit? I said, you dressed as Barbra Streisand, the third album. <laughs> and, uh, but they say that men can talk. But like, for example, if you're going to have a talk with like your husband or something. Right. And if you do face to face, it's almost viewed as. Um, intimidation. Confrontational, you have yeah. to go on a walk and then m- not make eye contact. Mm. And a lot, it actually allows men for some reason to open up more. Video games do the that same checks thing. Out. You get on, I get on with all these guys and we're playing video games. And in Fortnite, it's like there's a long time of like collecting and looting. So you have a lot of time to chat. Downtime. Yeah. yeah. And that's how you bond. And it's, totally. it's a great way to bond. No, some of the best bonding came on like two player games where it was like, you know, co-op, 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 where you're just like, Playing Halo co-op when you know when we transitioned. You didn't to play Xbox. Perfect Dark, did you? It's, Never it's, played Perfect Dark. Okay, it was yeah. the predecessor to um, uh, James the 007 on N64. Ooh, that we played the fuck out of. It's it's the same company, same game, but just like better. Yeah. And you could play co-op. My cousin Brian and I would play, like you said, to four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Just yeah. didn't stop. Oh, and then we played a weird. There was a weird. James Bond game on GameCube where you were like Sean Connery. You were all the different James Bonds. Oh yeah, it was like the it was there was a failed. Rare. We loved it. We loved it. Really, Me and my brothers loved that game because Rare, yeah. the company that made like Banjo Kazooie, James Double uh, O Seven, Golden Eye, you know all those great games. That, yeah, you know they lost the rights to James Bond. I think to like EA Sports or yeah, some, it was something some like that. Bullshit some company. Big, yeah. 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 And so they tried to bring that back on GameCube and like other systems, and it never worked. It never worked, but I'll tell you, at the fucking uh, uh, in in Southeast Baltimore for the Halkis boys, <laughs> in the room with two, a bunk bed and one other little bed in it, we were fucking cruising. My brother and I were in a room in a, with a bunk bed. Yeah, it was my two brothers in a bunk bed in a red metal bunk bed, which we cracked my brother George's skull on once ah. wrestling. He, we were wrestling, and then we fucking. He just hit his head and he was like, "How am I, is it okay?" And he was like, ah. "Blood was streaming." <laughs> it was fucked up. He still has a little mark. I have to. Um, he has he has a little mark. But yeah, we had they had then and I had a twin bed in the corner, and that was how we lived until I was in like tenth grade, and I was I demanded. And by the way, we just had an extra room <laughs> the whole time. We had an extra room that my dad didn't feel like cleaning out. <laughs> <laughs> the entire time, we As had a kid, one. You don't know, yeah. To say like I should have this room. Totally. It took until I was like not an adult, but you know when you're like fourteen, what you still you're starting to get some like adult ideas, and I'm like, where the fuck am I? And let's be honest, we're all starting to beat off, <laughs> and it's like I'm like <laughs> I need some personal beat off space. Enough having to plan every single beat of my life. I need to relax. It's horrible to do in the shower. Shower, yeah. The ba- oh, you know how much bathroom jacking off I did, <laughs> pretending to read Greek magazines that had titties in them. Sometimes, I'm like, oh, I'm reading Greek. You should be happy. It's like, oh, that's the only time you're ever reading Greek oh, stuff. He. It's, yeah, yeah. It's when you're in the bathroom shitting for a very long time. My brother and I shared a room until I was like, until he was uh, same with him. He's like, I yeah. gotta. Have some freedom. So they, because our house was so small, we had my sister in her room, my brother and I in one room, my parents in a room and a bathroom. And they, we had a like a den kind of area. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we converted that into a room for mm. my brother. So my brother could have some, fun, yeah. you know, because it was just too much. Of course. And then he ended up moving out of the house at 18 anyway. So we, that went back to like the computer back to room. to the den. I have my room. own space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's too much. Too much. Everybody on top of each other. We've talked about it before, but Eldest was even worse. Although you you were in the burbs pretty fast. We le- yeah we left. We moved to fifth grade. Did you feel like a king when you got your own room in, in the burbs? How did you feel? I was. I remember being like I I was happy about it, but I was like a little salty because my sister's room was so much bigger. She's like five <laughs> years older than me, so I was like, damn, I want the big ass. She's a fucking size queen. <laughs> yeah. Great moves in his own goddamn room. <laughs> he is a large oaf to his credit. He is a is giant true. man. You were this size in third grade. <laughs> He was pretty you big. Know, I think I legit hit my like crazy spurt in like middle school. No, yeah. not middle school. Well, between wasn't it an fourth advantage and to be grade. tall in middle school? I don't no. like. It wasn't. <laughs> it's not an advantage to be anything but a rich kid in middle school. I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Did, don't you notice? Like, I look back now. I'm like the kids that were popular. You look back now. You're like, oh, they were just rich. Yeah, they just had nicer stuff. Yeah, yeah. They weren't. They any, believed in themselves. Well, they were. They had. 
they had parents that were kind of assholes. Yeah, you know they what told I mean? them you're might. the best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It, it could have been an advantage. It could have been, but in I high did school, not it wield been. it strategically. For no. you, a u- useless. There's never been a man who's used his height less than you in the yeah. history of the world. I should have played you fucking could, basketball. You could be a 5'3 man, and your life really doesn't change that much. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe your wife wouldn't have matched you <laughs> on a dating app. That's the only difference. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so thank God, I guess you are this tall because you couldn't handle, you couldn't swim I'm, in these waters, I'm, elders. I need the height. I need the height. You need it, but you've never used it. No one has ever utilized it less. When you got it, you don't need to. I feel like when you're, I feel like when you're tall, like you need to be like more under the radar because you're already so like that's what imposing, you think. So like that's what you think. But everyone's like jealous. Presence. I remember being jealous. I wanted so badly to be tall. It's so funny, I never in my, like, I'm not even kidding. This is going to sound like I'm making this up. Three years ago is when I realized I'm short. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you guys, it'll sound, it, it sounds like I'm lying, but I never in my life thought I was short. It's crazy. And me and him have been, like. How tall are you? Five? I'm 5'7". Five, that's not short. How tall are you? Uh, like 6'5". Jesus. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like. I'm I'm not I've said this before and people think I'm kidding. Our friend who's six feet tall in my head we're the same height. Eldis is like three inches taller than me. Like in my head. Like in my head I'm like But and, in my head we're the same height. I know, that's what I mean. It's like if anybody's like five ten or under, I'm the same height as them. You know what I mean? But what I just I was blessed to not have that. Like, I never thought about being tall in my life. God was like, we're not giving you any confidence. So, and same with me. I was just, it was never, I had one eyebrow. Yeah. (laughs) I was so skinny. Yes. Like, horrible, like, you know, and then I. The picture of you as a little kid is so funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I used to have, like, really parted hair. You know, that was, like, the look. Yeah, yeah, But then because I was gay, I did, like, an extra. Oh, a little extra. I was ridiculed for it. And (laughs) it, it. And every time I was called faggot, I look back now, I'm like, they weren't. Wrong. <laughs> I mean, they they obviously saw something. They picked in up me. on something. Up. I remember a kid making fun of me because I was in seventh grade. I was in German class, and I didn't have armpit hair yet. Like I was a oh, late bloomer. Wow! And that was like a focus of everyone's conversation. It was like, what? What? Are, yeah. What? What in the world? What do you want me to do? Of course, but they'll you'll get made fun of for anything. They'll, they'll believe you anything. me. They yeah. did not know about my Maleficent action. Yeah. <laughs> no one was to know about no, my Maleficent no action one, figure. No one could know. But I loved Pokemon. I loved all that stuff. Like Christmas was like all the nerdy stuff. I guess I'm more nerdy than I thought. This year I'm excited because now I'm married, so I get to have a Christmas. Yeah. With by the way, else. congratulations. And also, when did I feel like I talked to you? I got a text not even from you. I got a text from Liz. Mm. I got a text from the the manager of the that comedy store right. that was like, "Mateo's getting married this weekend. Can you come by?" And I was like, "I'm on the road for one month. I would love to, but I can't." And I was like, "It's like hilarious to get that text and be like, okay, sick. Congrats. That's awesome." But it was like I feel like you just. You just were married one day. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I, I wish I could be like, no, well, we actually, yep, that's Cause, right. Because I do, I feel like the last time you were on the pod and the last time we really talked about it, you were kind of in a little bit of a, a little sad boy phase, a little bit of like a, <laughs> I'm still in you know, a sad boy yeah, phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't change. But you were in like a, you know, when am I going to find the right guy? You know what I mean? It yeah. didn't feel like it. So are we talking like a, a whirlwind romance? What happened here? Yeah, I, look, I, I started talking to him in uh, February. February and um, it's crazy that it's going to be a year. Yeah, that is kind of crazy to think about it. But anyway, um, yeah, he, he did one of these like you know these like sort of soft core porn things that Insta influencers do where they're like, get ready in the day with me. Oh and it's my like, god, <laughs> dude! Girls will be like outfit of the day, and then they just turn their back to the camera, take their bra off. You can see the sides of their breasts, and it's like. This is sick. I, I'm. I like this, but there's no way this is necessary to see your outfit. Nope. It's fucking insane how they'll do that shit. Yep. And when I saw his breasts, <laughs> I, thought, I saw. Him, I knew he had a nice butt, and he was so cute. And mm-hmm. so I followed him. And then everyone's like, "Who messaged you first? I was like, "Obviously, I messaged him first. I'm so desperate. There's no nothing about me is cool. He didn't even know who I was. He didn't know I was a comedian until after awesome. like weeks and weeks of talking. Yeah, yeah. But then it turned into like FaceTiming, and then it was you know just like how it usually goes. Sure. But then the thing is like when you meet someone, then it can shift quickly. Sure. So he's like, I want to come to New York, and I was like, such a comedian. I'm like, we'll come for two days. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Just come for the weekend. You yeah, know, yeah, six yeah. hour flight from Mexico. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then 
and he landed and I saw him. And then the second I uh, saw him, it was so strange. It was really, it was kind of like a, I don't believe in the psychic stuff, but it was a little bit of a premonition. I, I The first thought I had was like, oh, this man will be in my life for a long time. Wow. And it just clicked. It just worked. That's and it, great. it got to a point where it's like we just wanted to have a life together. Congrats, so man. That's yeah. awesome. Thanks. So now That's I'm a, beautiful. I'm a married old bitch. That's great. <laughs> That's Honestly, who are we kidding? That was your destiny the whole time. You were, bo- you were put on this. When you were a little gay child polishing Maleficent, you were meant to be a married old bitch. <laughs> became what I worship. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I would break it because I would use it to play. And then it would obviously glass would break. So of my course. aunt or my mom had to keep like super gluing yeah, yeah, back yeah. on her horn or this Hilarious. and that. Yeah. I fucking, can you look up Maleficent glass Please. figurine from the 90s? Because I fuck, it, I, it, it's going to, it's all coming back, all coming <laughs> back to me. Uh, there the, the, uh, the vintage Disney Japan that yeah the p- price drop one and the one next to it. Well, let's buy one from a to tail. the right to the right one to the right oh. that one, oh, that's wow. it, that's what it was. Should I buy that? Oh my god! You really should. Yeah, that was it with the back. Oh my god! That's it, dude. Oh, I love. That's so- what my aunt Cindy bought me. Mod on. Yeah, that's seven, beautiful. Yeah, that was it. Oh my god! I should really buy you should myself buy this. one. You should buy this. Are you kidding me? You have to. I didn't even that's think awesome. about it. Yeah, <laughs> the fact, that's why I'm so jealous. Of these fucking little kids today is like there's Maleficent. Anything you want, right? You had this to make do. It. This was all we had yeah. back then. <laughs> so for all the gay kids out there who want a Maleficent, you get this or it's or it, nothing. Or it's not shit. My cousin Brian is also gay. We used to play uh, magic. And what that means is we were like Sailor Moon characters. We had <laughs> yeah. magic wands and stuff. Yeah. And I remember the best thing. <laughs> this goes to show how much money we didn't have. My The best gift we ever got. My Uncle Mike took. There was like. Uh, uh, he took a, like, a pl- like a plastic bar. Snapped it in half. And duct taped tennis balls to the top of it. So it looked sort of like Maleficent's. <laughs> Her wand. Bit. Oh, you, there's nothing. The scepter from the goddamn Queen of England That's was not awesome, as good as dude. that. Yeah. We loved those fucking Just doing spells at each other. Spells at each other. <laughs> I loved Captain Planet because of the rings. I mean, mm-hmm. that was another good, good favorite go-to um but yeah, Christmas it'll be nice. We're gonna decorate that the, my apartment. Yeah, you, this is your first Christmas as a as a. And he's never seen man. snow. Ooh, he is from Mexico. He's like, that's awesome. and it keeps getting colder. And he keeps thinking he can just wear a sweater. I'm like, you have to get a winter jacket. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah. this fine. I'll be fine. I'm more. I'm like, <laughs> no. I'm like, it's going to get cold. I'm so excited to see snow. <laughs> we watched The Princess Switch last night just to make fun of it, like me mm-hmm. and my friends. And the only person who was fully invested was my husband. <laughs> We're like, she's an idiot. This is so stupid. How gay is like, no. Was she fall in love with him? <laughs> like, oh, my God. We watched Insidious because I was like, well, we should watch like Halloween movies. And yes. Stuff. So I love Insidious. It's a cla- it's just very straightforward, like yeah, g- g- nice spook effects and mm-hmm. stuff, like jump mm-hmm. jump scares and stuff. So we watched, of course, about possession. And then he was so scared, and I was laughing. He's like, "Don't laugh at me. This is real in Mexico." <laughs> and I was like, "Amore." We still have witchcraft in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I turned all the lights off and went to bed. And he went to the bathroom. He's like, "Amore." <laughs> I'm like, "You, it, it, the bed's right here." He yeah. ran to the bed. He was so scared. <laughs> but he's a great, great husband. That's awesome. And he, he, you know, I love him. I am yeah. absolutely in love with him. And he, he. For he came from entertainment. I mean, he used to be on Broadway in Mexico, and so so he gets the life we live. Like right. he's not offended if I say I have to do this, or especially because comics, we need time alone. Totally, that's a huge thing that I didn't realize I need. Like I just need to sit alone and do nothing. Yeah, let my mind wander. I recharge by doing nothing. I'm with you, brother. And he gets it. He's like, fine, I'll go keep myself busy. He's not like dependent on me, and it's it's great. It's a great relationship, that's and he's beautiful. fucking. Gorgeous. Yeah. Hell yeah. He is hot as hell. I saw that picture you posted. I was like, God damn. That's a piece of ass right there. <laughs> That's important. It's That's insane. important. It's Gotta insane. have a piece of ass in your life. Yeah, I fully a, believe that. Yeah. Respect. So, Rodrigo. So I'm going to have Christmas with him. He's going to come. He already met my, all my family when I did the Chicago theater. So mm-hmm. he met all That's 800 awesome. of them. Are you getting, you have a, you said you're not a big gift giver. Do you have anything in mind for Rodrigo? Angel. By the, 
<laughs> Even for Christmas too. All right. <laughs> the luckily locker is a thing to say when you get anal on this day. That's the island greeting. <laughs> Bing Crosby. I can't believe he just took America by storm. My favorite Christmas movie is White Christmas mm -hmm. because the writing is so... There, no one's saying anything. That, they're words. They're English words. Yes. Nothing connects. No None one's speaking matters. to each other. Bing Crosby is in his early hundreds and he's trying to pretend to be like a 21-year-old soldier in <laughs> World War II. It. Oh, Stavros, White you've got to watch okay. it. White Christmas starring Danny Kaye. Gay as oh, a picnic Danny K. basket. Yes, that guy's hilarious. And then Rosemary Clooney. Yeah, there it is. Bing Crosby. Have yourself <laughs> a merry little Christmas. I am a Christmas movie guy. I love. I mean, this is the it's the number one Christmas movie of all, all right, time. I'll watch it. I'm a Christmas vacation guy. Obviously, that's my that those movies remind. It's like George Costanza as a movie. It's so stressful. Yeah, yeah it is stressful. So stressful. It is stressful, but it's you know it's. But I love Julie Louis Dreyfus. She's in that incredible. Movie. She's in incredible. It. And I don't can't do they show Beverly D'Angelo's tits in that one too, or was it just the first? No, that was the first. Chris, one at the pool. The, just the regular vacation. Yeah, she has a pair on her. What a wow, Beverly D'Angelo. What a what a legend. Well, Vera Allen, who plays the dancer in this movie, I read in my this is how gay I am mm -hmm. the musical theater a history class I took at <laughs> art school. <laughs> Gay multiplier, <laughs> art school, musical history class. Super, super Saiyan. <laughs> she, she was so thin mm. that they covered her neck in every scene. Wow. And when you watch the movie, it's quite frightening. Like you know, like she's like skeletal. She had an eating disorder, probably. Probably, but I mean, back then, it just, none of that stuff was talked about. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you yeah. can see what they did to like you know. But she's a phenomenal dancer. I mean, like, she, her dancing was unbelievable. What year is it from? 1953, yeah, 4? See, there is there is something really interesting about watching these movies from even, like, the 30s to the 50s, where it's like, it really is, it's almost like they haven't fully made the transition to a the art form being completely um, separated from live performance. Right. Where it's like, there are elements of, I mean, the Danny Kaye movies... He's kind of like doing stand-up comedy in the yeah. middle of a movie. Yeah. And it's like they have audiences for stuff and then these big show pieces. And it's they're literally this movie. Okay, cool. I'll check it out because I'm fascinated by those where it's like, yeah, these people are just like, it, they haven't figured out film as its own thing yet. And that probably comes in the probably the 70s, all that kind of shit. But like, yeah, it was just an adaptation of vaudeville, Broadway live shows. Yeah, there's always dance breaks. But I guess without CGI and Marvel, tap dance is the next best thing. It was cool. I mean, there is. I really like what I got into. And I probably when I have a little time off, we'll get back now in the holidays. I'm in the middle of my fucking time off. My vacation <laughs> has started. Fat Rascal, the special is out. I hope you've already seen it multiple times. Hopefully it's trending on Netflix. Um, oh, and the advice special part two is out. And the on advice YouTube. special part two, Watch of course, it. we'll put that. We'll put all this stuff in the beginning, and we'll 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 uh, post a clip on the on the Instagram page. I wish we had a budget to make our own 1950s Christmas movie, dude. We got we can do it. Do you think we, so? And we sing songs. There's dance breaks. Absolutely, like that would be awesome. What's dude. the plot? Oh, this is good. This is we de first of all we can absolutely get a movie made. You uh, think so? We absolutely can get a movie made 100%. You think Netflix, they won't give me a special, but they'll give me a Christmas movie? <laughs> Maybe it's Stavi Baby Enterprises is the financier, but we will get a fucking, we will get a movie made. That's a great idea. Holy shit. And I want to sing like Bing Crosby. You of know, because he had that very deep bass voice like, have yourself mm -hmm. a merry little Christmas. He beat the shit out of his kids. He was too. a big beating, a, a big, a, he beat a lot of, I think, wives and kids. Um, we, okay, let's think about this. I get, here's, are right, you ready for a plot? Yep. You have a beautiful angelic family. You and your, you're married, your husband, you know, you guys have an adopted kid running around, whatever. I am your, maybe I'm your cousin, maybe I'm your brother. I'm freshly divorced. My wife kicks me out of the house. I'm maybe I'm old school. Maybe I'm a little homophobic. I haven't really like <laughs> figured it, my shit out yet. But what know? about the movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, That's a dumb joke. <laughs> I get kicked out of my house, 
And I'm a Grinch. I hate the holidays, you know. I And the power, just being around you guys, you know, we have like a, I'm picking my, my niece up from the from ice skating. And we just it. use music from other Christmas movies. So in your life, when we show you, it's just, you're a mean one, yeah. Mr. Grinch. <laughs> I love, dude, that's a, yeah. And then we, uh, maybe I find a little love. You know, I don't know. That's I think this just sounds like your coming out story. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would be with a woman yeah. <laughs> in my idea, but you know, that's that's one way we could go with it. I think that's it. Okay, that's the movie. That's the movie. Very Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck for sure. Yes, so good. Yes, yes. I, and my, my favorite. Do you have a favorite Christmas song? Hmm. I mean, I maybe it's recency bias, but I mean, I, Mariah Carey's. Well, I yeah. mean, that's the one that I, cr I crush the most. Like, that's, you know, I really like, that's like a, and it's crazy to think about, she just wrote that. That just didn't Alex exist. Casio keyboard. It just didn't exist, and it feels like it's been around for 100 years. Yep. Um, that, I mean, I, I, maybe I'm a basic bitch, but I think that's my favorite, my, that's my favorite one. They played that once at Pride, uh, when I used to go out. We were at a gay bar, and it's In like June? everyone's wasted. Yeah. <laughs> That's ultimate camp. <laughs> we were all at this bar and it's like, you know, like, you know, gay shit. Right. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, ding, 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 ding. And I mean, when I, it, you would have thought Jesus had come back yeah, yeah, to yeah, bring yeah, everyone yeah, to yeah, salvation yeah, yeah, because yeah. the gays were just flying yeah. everywhere. As Kathy Griffin said, it looked like the who in Cincinnati. Just like, it was insane. Yeah. Oh, man. That, my favorite Christmas song is from Home Alone. Mm. The Somewhere in My Memory. Like, nee, 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 give us a little bar. Give us. Nee, oh, is it a. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm, that is it. Mm -hmm. Or the first Noel. The the most um he, he's a great singer Clay Aiken but it's so hard to listen to him when he sings Christmas music because it's just so it's the perfect combination of Christian and gay yes because when he sings Joy to the World it's Joy to the World like it's just so like mm -hmm. it's it's like if Michael's Arts and Crafts made an album <laughs> that's yeah. It. yeah but he he it's like I just love the first Noel that's mm -hmm. a great song the first give us a little bit of it. Noel. Oh, so that's good. beautiful god uh th th yeah give us a sing us a little something for the uh stavi's world first annual mateo sings christmas <laughs> special we'll we'll do it we'll next year we'll really do it up even bigger yeah what's, a, what's we'll have a, somebody in a piano with a piano <laughs> Elvis will be wearing a tuxedo what's a good christmas song that i can sing um, 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 um. Hmm. what's something good to get the you know imagine our listeners they're hiding from their families. They're going on a walk. Why would they be listening to a podcast on Christmas? They must really not like who they're around. So they're just, they want a little reprieve, something to really give them a pep in their step. I was like, all I can think of is Silent Night. Yeah, no, no, we don't want them to kill themselves. <laughs> they realize that you know, the the wedding they can't save their marriage. No presents will make up for the fact they were absent the Mar first ten years Mar of their children's Carey's lives. Version of uh, Santa Claus is coming. To Ooh, that's a good one. That's a great one. Mm -hmm. uh, even the Michael Jackson, like, Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh, the classic. Yeah. That's, That's a classic. So Stevie Wonder is so good. Yep. Ding, 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 ding. How does that go, Dan? Then, 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 Christmas all alone. Candles, then, then, then. I don't know the words. Oh, or Patty LaBelle. Where are my backup singers? <laughs> oh, yeah, that yeah, clip? yes. That's a classic this clip. It's Christmas. <laughs> I don't know the cue cards. Give me the words. <laughs> that's, that's also a Christmas tradition, is Patty LaBelle. Classic. Fucking the, fucking the words up. Yeah, dude. Um, well, Eldest, do we have any uh, any Christmas questions here? What do you think? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, the one last thing. What we make, we make something for Christmas that's Greek origins. It's a mm. Naples dish from okay. Napoli. It's called strufoli. Strufoli. And it's fried balls oh, yes. in honey with sprinkles. Yes. But well, I think it's Greek origin. Yes. Lukumades is what that's Greek what people call That's what you say, lukumades? Lukumades. Yeah, Can yeah. I see what lukumades looks like yep. in strufoli? Because I'm sure it's the same thing. Lukumades. Go, Luko Luko Mades. Mades. Yeah. Yep. It looks so. That's like almost it. Look up yeah. Strufoli. S T R U F F O L I. Strufoli. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, that's the it's exact the same, same thing. thing. You guys just, just added sprinkles. sprinkles. <laughs> that's the most. Copy the homework, but change a little something. Change one answer. Uh, you guys stole our shit so completely. Well, look, and okay, then put a couple little gay sprinkles on there. <laughs> a little truffoli, <laughs> known as honey balls, is a Napolitano dish made of deep fried balls of sweet dough. Mm -hmm. The dough is blah 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 for the truffoli the dough. The wait, can we go to Wikipedia to see what the origin is, and then we get? I'm sorry, yes, then we'll, of course. We'll be done with this. No, no, no. This is good. Eldis, it was right on the side, you fucking dunce. Can I not it? A smaller dish is described by Archistratus. Oh, by a Greek a poet. A Greek poet from Gela in Sicily. It is called Enkris. Enkris? I've never heard. A dough ball fried in olive oil, which is detailed in gastronomy, a work now lost, but partially preserved. All right, who gives a fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, all this shit. These are cake, also known as gzzlhohol. <laughs> The, the name Strufoli originates from the Greek word strongilos, which means rounded. Really? Interesting. Well, then why the fuck do we call ours lukumia? Look up <laughs> look up lukumades and see what the fuck the uh, Wikipedia has to say. Because strongilos, stru I got to be honest, lukma. Yeah, go, go there. Lokma, who the fuck calls it? Originated yeah. in Egypt. What the <laughs> fuck is this? Are you fucking kidding me? Italians steal ours and you're going to fucking tell us we stole our shit from Egypt? It's all next to each other. I guess. Lukma <laughs> means morsel, mouthful, or bite. The dish was known as Lukmat al Qadi or judges' morsels. That's what I call my dick. <laughs> That's what I call my balls, the judges' morsels. In 13th century Arabic cookery books. And the word Lukma or Lukma by itself. The Turkish name for the dish Lukma is derived from the Arabic, as is the Greek name Lukumades. Fuck that. <laughs> Bullshit. So controversial. This is fucking, they've, they've erased us from history. The Italian one gets its own fucking thing, but ours is fucking Egyptian all of a sudden? Yeah, that, I actually am, why don't even they bring up Struffoli? This is fucking horseshit. <laughs> Fuck you know this. It, you know what it's missing? What's Sprinkles. That? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You motherfuckers put a couple sprinkles on there. Oh, this is pissing me off. Go down. It was cooked by. Keep going. Regional varieties. Let's go to Greece, please. The dish is called lukuma. This is a mainstay of Greek cooking, particularly in the south of Greece. It's popular street food. That's right. It is. Um, but is it only? Is it Christmas time? Because truffoli is no, only done no, at Christmas no. time. We have them all the time. Oh, they're also Hanukkah treats. Wow, this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> As the name of Luka, the term was also used by Greek U Jews, Romaniotes, as the name for Luka mothers who call them Sving Sfigi and make them as Sfigi means like Titan. Pontic Greeks who migrated from the Black Sea as a result of the Laosian conference called them Tsirichta. Interesting. Exposed. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't see a fucking Albanian. What's Albanian dessert, dude? More sophisticated. Yeah, than right. This shit. You dip fucking. You you put a, a little powdered sugar on a fucking, on a cow's udder, and then suck the milk out, and that's what you fucking pieces of shit have. To to, to celebrate this. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if it Let's go. shows up. Hold on. Hmm. What do we have? Service might be mid back here. It's playing. Uh oh. Oh, Jesus. This is some shit karaoke. <laughs> this is Annie. <laughs> I'm dreaming <laughs> of a white Christmas. Mm -hmm. Just like the ones I used to know. I beat my children. <laughs> I get my belt out and let them know who's boss. <laughs> Where the treetops glisten and children listen, especially my kids, to hear sleigh bells in the snow. Mm. This music is so gay. <laughs> I'm dreaming. I could have been a singing star in the 30s. Oh, I, sure. I was born at the wrong you goddamn wrong time. time. Thank you. Thank you, Mikhail. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. For Christmas, I always celebrate. <laughs> I have Bob and Robert Bacall <laughs> and Tisha Sterling <laughs> and Charles Ashnabach <laughs> and Red Buttons comes over and we have so much fun. 
Elders, why don't we go? Well, surely we have some questions, even if they're not Christmas oriented. You know, the people listening on Christmas, like we said, they're down on they're down in the dumps. They need they need uh, help. They're they've ignored their family. They're by themselves. And we're your family today, folks. Spend Christmas with <laughs> what a family. <laughs> Spend Christmas with me, me, Eldis, and Mateo, the the Southern Baltic. <laughs> <laughs> the Italian Albanian Greek Alliance. We're here. <laughs> the worst army ever. <laughs> yeah, don't try and get any logistics done. We're not the people for you, but we're here to sing to you. We're here to solve all your problems. So, Eldis, let's see what we got here. Mm, interesting. Hey, Bob, and esteemed guest. Uh, so, here's the deal my mother in law sucks and mm. nobody likes her nobody gets along with her uh the way that my wife's family deals with it is that they just nice. put up with her they just let her act the way she wants to and uh that doesn't work for me and so i say things or i push back when she does stuff and it just doesn't really work Pause. Well, yeah thing, i know we're thinking the same uh, thing he I, needs a maleficent action <laughs> <family>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe your st- maybe your mother in law is picking up on a little something in the relationship that doesn't exactly add up. Maybe that's why she doesn't really care for you too much. Hmm, interesting. Face to face with a strong willed woman, you just have to throw out a little catty comment. You can't let her get away with it. <laughs> You have to maybe, I don't know, make fun of her shoes. <laughs> okay. All right, let's just say you do have a mother-in-law. <laughs> you are a straight man. We will we will continue. We will continue the, the question. I honestly think it's we answered the question. <laughs> Let's see what the end has to say, Eldis. My mother-in-law, she'd go to family counseling with me, and she said, yes, and we went, and it was fine. But the counselor said that what really needs to happen is that my wife and my mother-in-law need to go. And now, it's been like eight months, and my wife won't go. Hmm. So what should I do? Should I just drop it? Should I let it, uh, should I just keep keep waiting? Should I ask my wife to go? The three of us, what should I do? Big stuff. I know you have hmm. a challenging relationship with your dad, and I hope you can give me some insight about my mother-in-law. Thanks. Well, I would say if you're the kind of person who has no problem maybe hiding things for years, maybe keeping deep secrets buttoned Not down. so deep. Yeah, maybe. I would say just file this under one of those things that you could just let it go and pretend's not there. Pretend you have a good relationship with your mother-in-law. Here's, here's what you do. No. You get another phone... That no one knows about. <laughs> um, okay. He's basically, this is, I feel like this is a, an age old problem of the like, the, <laughs> you're gonna have to just assume he's straight, Mateo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Plenty of men talk gay but aren't. Mm-hmm. This is, this is kind of crazy to me, like, who would like go to therapy with their mother-in-law on their own? Is that a little? <laughs> I mean, isn't that like kind of crazy? I was, I'm wait, like, wait. Did he go with his mother-in-law or with his wife? Did he? Say I thought he went with both. No, no, no. I thought he went with his wife, and the counselor said he has to go. Well, why is the counselor giving her an ultimatum? That seems like a bad counselor. Wait, I thought he said... Yeah, play it again, play it again. Sorry, we were mocking him for his voice. We weren't listening to yeah, his yeah. question. And it just doesn't really work. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I asked my mother-in-law if she'd go to family counseling with me, and she said yes, and we went, and it was fine. But the counselor huh. said that what really needs to happen is that my wife and my mother-in-law need to go. And Interesting. now okay. it's been like eight months, and my wife won't go. Wow. What does that mean, that my mother and my, my wife and mother-in-law need to go? Need to go where? To family counseling. Family I counseling. see, I see. Which does make sense. I mean, what the fuck are you really going to get to the bottom of with well, your mother-in-law. The bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, yeah, this. <laughs> May your days be I'm having, merry. I'm, <laughs> I'm having a hard time doing the math in my head and this ending up with this. It's Mateo. long division. <laughs> and neither one of us are equipped to answer this question. Um. Oh, I man. say we never speak of this again. 
This is very interesting, though. Like, the fact that he went with his mother-in-law, he broached the subject in a weird way, right? Like, he opened... Like, he kind of called While this woman's bra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He called this woman's bluff, and she went with it. And really, his wife is being a coward here. Let's be honest. His wife really is just the coward, and it's like, she just doesn't want to face her mom. I get, I mean, you know. I'd like to speak to the mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the mother's like, yeah, I'll go. Oh, counseling, is that where uh, a professional gets to maybe get us to speak very openly and honestly? Yeah, maybe it's a good idea me and you went without Sarah first. Maybe we can both get some stuff off our chest. <laughs> Not just come. <laughs> um... I'm yeah. so sorry. I That's really okay. was small minded. That's in my okay. Response. That's okay. No, no. That's what the show. I mean, are you familiar with the show? The, stu the studio audience approves. Yeah. I mean, what would you do if your wife just wouldn't go to counseling with, with you know, their awful parents? I just wish Bobby Kelly said it was him. Yeah. I wish he just left his name. Um,. Also, now it smells like fucking cigar smoke. I know. Bobby <laughs> Kelly. Little Even though it was months ago. Yeah, it was months ago. It was on Thanksgiving. But it really lingers, folks, in he the looks studio. He doesn't he? He does look great. I love Bobby. He's the best. His goatee looks awesome. He's real. I mean, you could... Uh, what, let's set the over-under for cheating. <laughs> when you lose a, 150 pounds and grow a goatee all of a sudden. That's not the facial hair of a man that's not planning on getting side pussy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't know about this. I mean, it's just like, this isn't your bad. You've sort of already kind of overstepped in a way that like, if your wife was going to, look, if you you want to tell her to go and you want to encourage her, that's fine. But like, you've really already done everything you can do. And even kind of calling the mom's bluff, you're more, everyone else in this family is kind of a coward. I do think it's probably important for your wife to go. I do think she clearly can't face her mother. And maybe she just needs to take steps to get to that point, whether that's going to therapy and talking about it. Like, what's her situation here? Um, I will say, a serious answer, I do think when you get married, you are essentially stepping out and starting your own family. And other family members have to respect that they're not going to garner the same amount of attention that they once had before because your focus is on the family you're trying to start. And right. it does sound like there's a lot of times parents wedge themselves in between their children's relationships because they're egotistical about it. They mm -hmm. still want to be the center of that person's yes. life. And it's like, you gotta back off. Right. Italian women. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can only do so much. And if your wife doesn't want to face this, dude, you might have to just like, let it go and maybe gently in the push her towards, you know, figuring it out. But also on some level, life is kind of short and it's like, I'm somebody who's trying to figure out all the problems with my family. I'm trying to get over it. And it's like, it's a lot of fucking work. And then at a certain point, I'm going to stop trying. And at yeah. a certain point, it's like, you kind of have to make do with where it is. It's like, what, I'm going to be going to fucking... I'm going to be 40 years old <laughs> trying to get like trying to make my family admit they've made mistakes. Like at a certain point, you people can't. are who they are Some, and you my, have to make the best of it. My and therapist he, says to me is like, you know, when I've had issues with family members, he, he was like, because I say, I want this. I want respect. I want to talk. He's like, that's like asking someone in a wheelchair to stand up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just have to. This yeah. is the way they are. And so you can say to your family, like, this is what I offer. And then that's it. I can't offer anymore because yeah. I can't fix you people. Yeah. It's, you have to take the responsibility off your no, you that's, know, yeah. shoulders. So do what you can. You've seen, it seems like you've done enough and the ball's kind of in your wife's court. And if she doesn't want to do it, then maybe you guys just kind of have to settle in here. And look, most of the, most of the world doesn't like their mother-in-law. It feels like a fucking, it feels like a classic, classic trope. You like your mother-in-law? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's nice. That's very nice. Hola. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> um, all right, Eld. Hit us with another one. Hey, Stav. Eldest guest. Uh, love you guys. Um, so I uh, am pretty young, got married not too long ago. Um, my wife and I, our relationship's the best it's ever been right now. Nice. 
getting right to the point, she has a friend, oh, and they're brother. pretty close. And now me and this friend are getting pretty close. Oh, the friend's no. a, a female. And Come on. I feel Come like on, man. Don't do if this. I try real hard, God damn it. I could... Uh, convince them to like have a three way. I think it'd be great. Um, I'm not quite sure how to go about it exactly. Um, I've tried to Google like how to get my wife to agree to a three way with a friend. You Googled um, it. Not too much there, so I wanted to see what you guys had. Uh, if you could help me out, I uh, would appreciate it. Um, thanks, fellas. God damn. Straight men. <laughs> it's hilarious. This really is like. Blow me away. The relationship's the best it's ever been. <laughs> I'm the happiest I've ever been. Now, how do I fuck it up? Now, how could I lose everything I've have, everything I've worked for and hold dear? Because her friend is polite. Because her friend is just. This is like, man. The this waitress wants to fuck me. I think. <laughs> wow. Can I get? Can this stripper? Does this stripper want to date me? Do all straight men assume that people want to fuck them? It's not that they assume. It's that every time you're around a hot girl, whether you like it or not, there's a there's there is a little mathematician in your head trying to figure out the <laughs> equation that leads to you fucking them. Okay, you know, and it's like a lot of times you'll be like, ah, "Sorry, man, we got nothing." Just a chalkboard. Yeah, be like, a lot of ah, eraser marks. I, so. you can't I get can't the do. Proof. I'm sorry. It's just not possible. That's most of the time you have an exasperated little mathematician that's like, you can't fuck this hot woman. You're too fucking fat or whatever, right? Is, there is no mathematician found. It's just an open door. Yeah, it's a glory hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's either he puts his dick in or not. And, you know, either way. I don't think the, the, the answering the question here should be about how to figure out how to give him a threesome. The question should be like, is this adding to your life? <laughs> Because is, well, well, even that is this even a possibility it's in not. any way, shape, or form? Has your wife ever mentioned being bi? Her, her and her friends ever hooked up? Have has your f wife ever mentioned possibly three? When you were even when you were dating and you were being freakier and like you know everyone's kind of a little you know whatever <laughs> has it ever come up even once in general? That's step Stop one. If he's googling <laughs> and then leaving. You a message. <laughs> She's not shown him any signs of being bi. Well, that's what if if there are no signs, if all that's going on here is my wife is friends with a hot girl I'd like to fuck, <laughs> and you have been like, well. I she's nice to me too. Maybe I can fuck both of them. Then you should not pursue this whatsoever. <laughs> you don't have the sauce. You don't have the juice. That's not how these things work, bro. Is it less likely for straight guys? Like if a wife's like, I want a threesome, but with another guy, is that a less likely scenario? Or are there guys who are like, fine, I'll do it? Um, that's crazy. I would never do that. Really? I'm just not interested in that at all. But there are there are people that would. Not that you have to hook up with them, but he's just sort of. I don't there. know. I don't want a guy to fuck my wife. I gotta be honest. That's not right. That's just not. Now it's less offensive if it's like a woman with a woman for some reason. I think. Well, look, if a wo there, there are plenty of women who are like... Men are dangerous. There are, <laughs> there are plenty of women who are like, I don't want another woman to fuck my husband, right? There's plenty of women... There's plenty of very straight women that won't do that. But there's a... I just... This is pure anecdotal evidence. It just feels like more women are bi or at least like bi... Or at least maybe... Maybe there's plenty of men that are... Have some bi thoughts, but just are so uncomfortable with them that they would I was never... Gonna say, I think it's more so that women have less hang-ups exactly, about right, expressing themselves right. than straight men do. But I will say, like, I've been in threesomes before, and it's not... I'm not in love with it. Yeah. There's a lot of work. Absolutely. And it's, like, to me, like, the trying to please this person and that person and myself, it just is so... The idea of it, sure, it's hot. Yeah. But then with there's there's too many hands. Yeah. <laughs> it's really it, not. It can great. go wrong. It's just what it is to me is that like you are, um, you're raising the ceiling of the sexual experience. It could be way better than just one on one, but you're also lowering the floor way down. But I also it think it could go way worse. A threesome should be with someone that's really not in your life. A threesome should be someone like... That's, even, that's a great... We haven't even gotten into that part of this. Right. this the premise is so ridiculous <laughs> that we haven't even actually begun breaking down all the ways, even if this was possible, that it would be a mistake. But yes, that's, that's very true. Like, here's the thing, buddy. If your wife was 
kind of buy or she showed any interest in a threesome or she brought it up ever, you don't start with her fucking best no, friend. No, no. That's fucking crazy. Because then she's like, oh, so you're looking at my best friend as sexy? Exactly. That's like, the thing, dude. You're, you're so out of your depth here, it's insane. This ends... This does not end good in any way, shape, or form. Very few people could pull this off, and it would take very specific yeah, blends John of John Stamos can pull this off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, notice the last caller. His problem wasn't with another woman, but it was a mother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, dude, I cannot... I could not... With the information you have given us, I could not... Um, recommend this less this is crazy you're just a horny guy and this is your life from now on you will meet women you want to fuck okay but you're not going to get to fuck them you're married that's how life works and unless your wife is really into the and look here's the thing even if your wife was really into it you would have to be very selective and very like you would have to take things slow because like that can fuck up a relationship like, you know, you could really overdo, like, one moment where you're too into the other girl or whatever. It's like, that's so complicated. With Like, threesomes, when you're casually having sex, can be complicated. Yeah. Let alone with your wife and her fucking friend, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you're so out of your depth here. I would love to talk to this guy. If we could get him, if we could get him on a live show, that would be great. Um, because, okay, when are you doing a live show? I want to come. We do live shows sometimes where we they call in on Discord, oh. and we actually talk to them. That's fantastic. So we, we'll have you on one day if you want to yeah, come back be, for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to. Um, uh, so I'd love to talk to this guy, but for right now, dude, you're this is such insanity. I can't. I can't <laughs> even like why you have. And the, you know what the best part is? The only reason he even has this level of confidence to think he could pull this off is because his wife has built him up. There, that is the great irony of when men want to cheat. It's like, I know this for myself. Not that I've ever exactly cheated, but when you're like in a casual relationship and a woman is giving you attention and then you're like, then I'm like, whoa, I'm getting more pussy from other girls now because I believe in myself. And it's, you're just a piece of shit who's taking advantage. You're just converting the energy a woman has put into you. Instead of putting it back in the relationship, <laughs> you're trying to use it to fuck somebody else. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> God, I need to talk to this guy. He's so fucking wrong. It's crazy. I think I can do one more. Sure. And then I got to dip. Yeah, yeah, no is worries. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Stavi and that Albanian prince you got in the back. <laughs> That's um, right. Man, I've just been going through it lately and figured uh, why not my favorite comedian could probably help me out. That's right, buddy. But, We're here uh, for you. Man, just life's been just mad and haven't been feeling like going on dates, but, um, you know, I want to be with a girl, but I haven't been feeling like putting energy out into, you know, doing all that. And then I have this great job at a, I probably shouldn't say the name, but a big uh, electric car company. <laughs> and... They they treat you like a fucking piece of shit there, mm. and we're getting paid less than wonder, most of these other places. And I'm wondering, you know, I must if I needed to give out up the name, what company of the place this could possibly be? <laughs> where I'm working. At. I have an idea, but no, no, I, I could, it couldn't be. Hey, hey, just not work there anymore, just because. I'm working there for a name, it appears now, because I'm making less than all the other guys, but I get to tell everyone, hey, I work at blank, but I don't know, man. I'm feeling like I uh, should go on a manic episode, quit my job, <laughs> no. move to Austin, Texas, or somewhere. No, no, and, no. Uh, probably end up doing drugs. <laughs> I didn't really offer uh, or ask any questions, but what does somebody do when they feel just, in life. I have an answer for this. When they're Great. fucking tired of their job and they're tired of where they're living and they're tired of all this shit. Is it time? Do I bite the brass bullet? What does that mean? I don't know. I Mission. think he's hinting at committing suicide. I love you. You're great. You don't need to do that. He's but, just... Yeah. Buddy, I love you too. You're just depressed, bro. <laughs> I've, I have Everything he's saying, I have felt so many times in my life. You are just down in the dumps, depressed... And I want to tell you, going cra go going even lower feels like the right thing to do. You do not want to do it because you will have to. You will feel exactly how you feel now, but with all your money gone, maybe an STD and like an addiction, and that you just have to 
climb out of a... You're basically talking about maybe digging a bigger hole because it feels better to do it really fast. This this is something that I think a lot of people go through when, you know, you realize you've just been playing the game of following the sort of script that life yeah. offers you. It's go to school, get a degree, drink with your friends, get a job, work the job, go on dates, da 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 and no one in that time has said, what are you interested in doing? Right. And I think that people look at, like, comedians or other people who sort of went off the beaten path and took the t- t- took the risk, essentially, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But there are things, like, even if it's, like, if your interests are small, photography, uh, video games, whatever, there is another community out there for you yeah. that you can start to actually nourish the things that you enjoy doing in life. I mean, that's all comedy was. For sure. It's not that we started doing it. We're like, I'm going to become a star. But it was no. being involved with the community doing shows because the only money we were paid back then was the respect of the other comics in the back of yeah, the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was you slowly build yourself up with other people in a community with common interests. It just sounds like he's bored. He doesn't even sound depressed. He sounds bored, but there's got to be something out there that he likes doing. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I I just I think he sounds depressed as shit. But I think that boredom has a has something to do with it. I think it's like I think this is what this is going back to your like straight guys can't talk directly. If we were going on a side to side walk, I think he would seem a lot more depressed. He's hiding how depressed he is under right. the guise of boredom is what right. it feels like. Right. And I'm fully with you though, where it's like. <clears throat> there was so much more to life than work. You know what I mean? Like, and so if you're at this place, right, and you thought, here's kind of what he's up against too. He's working at this prestigious, uh, you know, this prestigious place that has a big name, recognition, whatever. And he thought, I mean, I've felt this too, where it's like, I've accomplished things this year where I'm like, well, when that happens, I'll be happy. Sure. <laughs> and guess what? You're not happy, right? <laughs> and you have a version of that where you're like, you're like, I'm working at this place. Wait, the money's actually not good. They overwork me. And you thought by ha- being a, you know, involved with that name, you would have some kind of legitimacy something. You're realizing that's not how life works. And my advice to you would be, fuck that place. Use your qualifications to get a job at a place that pays you a real rate and doesn't overwork you. And then do what Mateo said, which is like, find something that makes you happy that like that becomes your reason Work is just to sustain yourself. Yeah. You've realized you've learned that the hard way. That f- this this dream job that happens to a lot of people, you get you accomplish what you thought was going to happen, didn't change shit, and in fact made you more. Didn't ma- in fact took took joy out of your life. Start living for fucking joy, and y- you will feel like going on dates, doing other stuff when you feel better. And I think there's a lot, and and reinvest in yourself, right? Like f- speaking personally, <clears throat> I w- I went through a version of this where. I'm so happy with all the success this year. It's been fucking crazy, but I've been overworked and I have not felt good for large stretches of it. And I I was going to go on tour for the beginning of next year and I decided to push everything back so that I could take a lot of time off and work on my own shit, right? Whether that's psych, you know, whether that's spending time with my family more, getting back more into my health, which has like been destroyed on the road, all this stuff. I'm taking some time to work on a couple of those things and then hopefully I think like that'll make me feel better and that will then just, make the rest of my life better too. My work better. Like my personal life has been completely on hold while I'm working all this stuff. And I think, I think focusing on yourself, finding a setup that helps you do that. All these feelings will go away. Shake it up a little bit. New job is a shakeup. If you want to move to a new city, maybe move to a new city. But I think finding something you love that realizing it won't come from work <clears throat> and then finding it in in an activity that you can, and then community just adds on to that. When you see other people that you like at those things, that, you know, that's a big, that's a big, like, kind of happiness, you know, multiplier, whatever. And I think that's really it, dude. You realize, like, this job is not solving the problems. It's creating a problem. Find a job that sustains you and sustains a hobby and sustains a lifestyle that you like because you just don't like your lifestyle right now. And I think taking steps to change that, that's the solution. And also it feels good it feels good when you make those changes and you're just like, it means now you I'm respect in- yourself. Exactly. And right now it sounds like you're not respecting yourself because you know the subtext of all this is everyone's making decisions for me and I feel I have no control of my life, but I feel enforced in this situation. Yeah. And so extreme situations <clears throat> of I'm going to move here, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. 
It doesn't actually solve anything. And it's like, yeah, like no matter where you're living, like life is still life. Yeah. It doesn't change yeah. anything. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's like investing in yourself is legitimately the only way out of that hole. hundred percent. So, yeah, dude, you're depressed as hell. Start working on yourself. Leave the job that makes you feel like shit and work for yourself and, and you'll be much better off. And even though Eldis knew this was the last question we were going to do and that Mateo had to leave, he decided he couldn't hold his piss 30 more seconds. Oh, and he's laughing in the fucking bathroom. We can hear him. So I guess we're just going to have to vamp. Oh, nice. Get the flush in there. You fucking idiot. We're literally ending the episode right now. Uh, we're... I was going to let it mellow, but... <laughs> They call it hello. <laughs> All right, well, Mateo, thank you so much for coming. You got to, you got to run. Thank you, thank you for having me of here. Of course, I had so, much fun. so good to see you. It's great to see you. We'll hang way more. We'll put you on. Anytime you want to come on a live show, we'd love to have you. I'll, I will be there. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy Christmas, everyone. We hope you're having a good time. Um, and we will, we'll, we'll be back. We, we have, I think, I think we're planning on doing a, uh, a, a. Um, our year-end live call show will actually be a catch-up. We're, we're trying to get people to uh, uh, update us on what's on who we've helped. Like Shark Tank, throughout. Shark, uh, shark yes, Tank updates. The updates. We're trying to do an episode <laughs> like that. So hopefully that's coming at you either next week, this week or next week. Um, but either way, Merry Christmas. Hope you're having a wonderful time. Watch watch Mateo's special. Watch my special, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Ciao.